Hey guys and welcome back to another video. Today we'll be taking a look at how to update our rooted Nexus 6P, this time with Expose as well, to the MTC20F I believe. That is the August update and we're inching our way a little bit closer towards our final release of Android N. Yeah, so let's get started. Right now my phone is on the MTC19X which is the July update for Android 6.01 and today we're going to be updating it to the MTC20F. Oh, did I say that? Okay, doesn't matter, but we'll have a look at it right now. So on our computer, we'll need to go to the developers.google.com where all the Nexus images are stored. This will be the first link down below. Allow access. Okay, so all we need to do is head over to this website. And I forgot to mention, today we're going to be using Flash Fire. I haven't done one of these for Marshmallow in quite a while, but it is the same process. But you can choose to use different ones, such as... Uh, flashing the f images individually by fastboot or using the flash all script which also uses fastboot and that's a little bit more iffy but first off we're gonna have to agree to these terms and conditions and then afterwards we can come over here on the right hand side and click on angler for nexus 6p now see at the bottom we have the mtc 20f and we can just hit the download link and i'm going to use my download manager because it speeds up downloads and stuff so i'm going to save this of course in just save this anyway, we're going to copy it to our phone later, or in fact you could download this on your phone if you'd like. But I'm going to be saving it to where I keep my stash. And we're just going to hit save and start download. So this will take, you know, actually a while. And when while that's doing so, make sure you have flash fire. So since your device is already rooted, you should be able to use this. And pretty much all we need to do is install this app. It's on the Play Store, uh, it's very easy. So I'm going to install it to my phone. And of course you can do this on your device, it's the same thing. And of course if you have exposed or a updated kernel that you need to flash, such as the Elemental X kernel, you'll need to download the updated one and also put that in to the actions of Flash Fire. So it does flash the new kernel over the old one and all that. So right now while we wait for our factory image to finish downloading, Grab all your files that you need, such as the exposed framework and any custom kernels or any other modifications that you need to reflash after updating. Uh, basically have those on your device, somewhere on your device ready to go. So I'll be back when this is finished. Alrighty, so as you can see, we're finished here downloading. We're going to go to our kind of our device and make sure that we can actually access the, we're gonna set the USB type to uh, for file transfers over here and then we'll be able to access it on our computer. Actually, we don't need that. We're going to use this, and basically we're going to copy, we're going to open the folder where it's finished downloading. We're going to copy the factory image to our device somewhere. Now I'm just going to drag it on top here, so it copies it to the root of the internal storage. Now this won't take too long. Uh, the MTP file transfers are pretty fast, even though you're transferring gigabyte worth of files. So we're just going to wait for this to finish, it won't be too long, and then we'll be able to get set up our, our flash fire things. And also, I've read another tip on one of my other videos, someone left behind a wonderful comment, that you probably want to update your TWRP, although you can do that using flash fire, and make sure, I guess, your SuperSU is up to date too if you encounter any problems. So now that's finished copying, we can head over back to our device and do everything from there. So as you can see, our flash fire app already installed. It's going to ask for root access. It's going to enumerate the partitions, look for OTAs and all that, but we don't have an OTA. We're gonna have a look at flashing the factory image. So I'm gonna go, no thanks. And of course, if you do have the OTA, you can check out my other video explaining how to do this on Flashfire, and it's very straightforward. I probably don't even need to make a video. So I'm gonna slide that away, and we're gonna press plus. We're gonna tap on flash firmware package, and we're gonna scroll all the way down to where we copied it. So this is where I've copied the MTC20F file. I'm gonna tap on that. So it's gonna scan the archive for all the images inside so that's going to detect our, uh, actually, our image that contains our boot, cache, recovery, vendor images, system, and user data. And of course, it's going to look at our radio and bootloader images, although I don't think it flashes the bootloader or the radio images or some of those protected ones, although I think you can change that in the settings anyway. So it's almost done. We're going to wait for it to finish scanning the archive, and then we're going to add our extra zip files, such as exposed or custom kernel. So right now we have the options to which ones we want to flash, 
you can see we can't really touch the bootloaders as they're protected. We can update these through fastboot. So I'll double check that the versions haven't changed. And it's changed the... Hold on, just bear with me for a second. Okay, so we want to make sure our boot is selected if we're not running a custom kernel. Otherwise, you can leave that checked and you can pretty much go on to add your custom kernel afterwards. Now, let me just double check the bootloader. So currently, it's 0.03.54 uh, and the previous one was... Well, I'll wait for that to open. And make sure data isn't checked and the rest and recovery isn't checked if you want to keep TWRP. So that's it, you can leave the rest like that. Now here it is, 05352, yes. So the bootloader has updated, and I'll show you how to flash this manually afterwards, after we do that. So, okay, that's cool. We're gonna hit check once you have, we're happy with this selection. We're gonna flash the boot image, system, vendor, and cache images. We're gonna hit okay, and we're gonna add another zip file here, add zipper OTA, and we're gonna navigate to wherever our exposed framework is. And there it is. So this is mounting system read and write. Yeah, that's fine. I'm gonna leave that. And we, you can also flash a custom kernel like that as well. And tap on this reboot one, and we're gonna tap reboot bootloader. And we're gonna check that. Because we wanna flash the latest bootloader image instead of having the old one. And of course, our radio image, I believe, has changed. No, it hasn't. So we just need to update, update the bootloader afterwards. So I'm gonna change that reboot function back to be back into the bootloader rather than booting up into Android. So of course we're going to hit flash, we're going to hit OK, and it's going to do all its newfangled dangled magic. Now while that's doing the magic, we're going to head back over to our computer here, where we're going to extract the at least the bootloader image out of this. So if you open up the TGZ factory image file, you're going to see this, right? What we're going to do is I'm going to extract it regardless, so I'm going to right click on the zip file, oh, sorry, the TGZ file here, and just extract it, extract all of it, because I'll need it anyways, and that'll be good. But otherwise, you can just open it and drag this image out somewhere else. You also need Android tools, so this, this is looking sloppy already, but I think we'll get this to work. So if I go on my basket build, you also need Android tools, which I'm pretty sure you guys do have. And let me just go replug my Ethernet cord in. Okay, so plug that in and it should work now. And you just need the Android tools folder, which pretty much just has all the fastboot.exes and stuff like that. And that is what you'll need to get. So if I just make a new folder, it's in Android. I have, I have already extracted here. So your ADB, I'll just open the zip file, sorry. So this is the file, these are the files that you need. And just extract them anyway. I've extracted them into this folder filled with crap. And once it's done extracting, we're just gonna open the folder, make sure it's ready to go. Now, where'd it go? Yeah, 20F. So we're gonna be using this bootloader image and of course, the platform tools to flash this. So let's get it ready, shall we? While we wait for this to almost finish, you can see it's flashing the vendor image right now. So in an empty space in your folder where the adb.exe, the two DLLs and fastboot is located, all you need to do uh, without anything selected, so nothing highlighted like that, so click off and you want to hold shift on your keyboard and press right click and that'll open a command window to that directory which saves us a lot of time for changing directories well it could be pretty fast if you're kind of affluent with all the cmd mabobbies but some people aren't so what we're going to type here is so you can see it's finished as well and that's going to boot into the bootloader which is what we need i'll also assume you already have drivers for this installed and i won't have to go over that but if you if your phone doesn't is not detected here when you type in let's just type in fast boot devices to make sure our device is here. You can see the serial number pop up on the command prompt, and that means your device is connected properly. So if it, you don't see anything there, it's just blank, I would like to invite you to have a look at my driver's installation video so you can make sure this, this works. Okay, so moving on, once your device is detected here, we can type in fastboot flash bootloader, L-O-A loader, with a space on the end. So leave a space in the end here, and we're gonna go back here to our factory image folder with the boot, new bootloader, 0351, sorry, 54, and we're gonna drag that into the command prompt. And if you're on Windows Vista or below, I don't think you can drag it in, as mentioned by someone else on another comment that they left. Uh, you can actually 
I think it was, he said go properties and then copy the location. So you can highlight that and then add in the file name .img afterwards so it looks like that. So you just get your file path in there and then hit enter. As you can see, that flashed really quick and we're gonna press start on the side here and our phone will boot up. Now this will have, so when the phone turns on, we'll be on the MTC20F rooted and still have exposed. And that's it. So we're gonna wait for this to pop all the way up and we'll have a look at, we'll investigate from there. Alrighty, so our phone has finished optimizing apps and you can see it booted fine. And if we go into the settings, we'll take, uh, take a look at the MTC20F build number. And of course, we're gonna check out if things are rooted. So we can open up Flashfire and you can see it works fine once it's done this part. Yep, it's done. So we can kind of tell that SuperSU is working. We can even open the app and it'll tell us that everything's fine. Those are my previously accepted apps, which is great. And of course, exposed installer. If we have a look at the framework, you can see it's already, it's installed at the top. So there we go guys, this is how you update a rooted Nexus 6P to the, I think it was the MTC 20F, which we're definitely very close to the release of Android M. And if you haven't seen already the really cool, the new launches that are supposedly coming out with the, next, with the new Nexus phones and whatnot, that will look spectacular in fact. And also, this is about it guys, this is, thank you for watching, this is how you do it. If you have any questions, feel free to leave it down below. And if you have any suggestions for tutorials, also leave them down below as well. I've just finished two exams for the past two days and I'm gonna start getting, it's gonna get more heavy, I'm gonna get heavier. And so after a couple of weeks or these few months, three months, I should be uh, finished school. So also another thing that I'd like to say, thank you very much guys for 3000 subscribers. It's pretty cool seeing that thing rise a little bit every month or every day, and it's 3016 at this point. So I'd like to thank everyone who has stopped by, watched videos, and ended up subscribing, and even liking those videos. Some of them have no dislikes, so it means I'm doing something right. So thank you guys for watching, and thank you for all the support that I've had over the past almost three years now since this channel was created. I think it was created a little bit longer, but I haven't uploaded videos like this uh, before. So thank you guys for watching, and thank you guys for subscribing, and I'll talk to you in the next one.